Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Wednesday, October 13, and it's a Zero News update from the garage. Uh, during my last runtime test, I did say that I needed to build a more efficient cell to run the test and to provide further evidence of the two to one return on investment relationship that I had reported earlier. So to that end, I've been building a new cell. Uh, I think I've come up with a pretty good design. In fact, sort of reinventing the wheel. But first I want to make, uh, send out a couple of thank yous to a couple of my fans and supporters. First of all, Scarecrow, who donated this really nice flat screen monitor to my right. Um, it allowed me to take and free up a lot of space on my bench to take and relocate my 12 volt power supply up onto the shelf, which is where I had the uh, archaic CRT monitor before and then uh, freed up the the space on my bench for some other tools. Thank you to Raptor for this 9 inch Ryobi bandsaw. Um, when I went to spin it up the first time it did uh, it did have a couple of problems. One of the tires broke on the uh, drive wheel so I had to order some spare parts and I'm hoping that those parts will be here before the weekend because by the weekend I hope to be assembling the new uh, tank for the cell that I'm building but moving on this uh, I received a couple of very nice donations from some of my fans and that made possible the purchase of this 8 inch drill press so I'm real happy to have this and this will get a lot of good use uh, in the lab as well so to those of you who have sent in donations, I really thank you for that. For those of you who would like to, uh, please visit my website, alt-nrg.org. That's alt-nrg.org. And there is a uh, donate button in the left-hand bar of uh, every web page. So if you feel so inclined, if not, I appreciate you watching anyway. Back to the project. Um, I was originally going to put the new cell into the old tank that was for my that I had originally built for my original S cell, the very first hydrogen cell that I designed or that I replicated, I should say. Uh, it was based on a design that was inspired by Ironhead. And as I began building the plates for the cell, I began to realize that uh, this tank would not be big enough. I was building the plates to fit in the in the existing enclosure but I don't feel that that is going to be the optimum way to build this cell. So instead, I'm building the plate assemblies first, <clears throat> and then I'm going to construct a tank to go around the plates that fits it properly. The cell is made up of 60 individual plates, like so. And these plates are three and a half inches wide, by about three and a quarter inches high. Each plate in solution will have approximately 20 reactive surface, uh, 20 reactive square inches of surface area for a total of 1,080 total square inches of reactive surface area in, in the design of the cell. And here's the star of the show. These are the three plate groupings that I have created or that I have assembled so far. Uh, there are three more that will that will need to be assembled. They are connected in series. You, ha you have an input terminal on one side, an output terminal on the opposite side which jumpers to the next group and it just goes back and forth in a S pattern throughout the cell. Essentially these plates are exactly like a 12 volt car battery. Uh, you have sets of parallel plates that are in their own individual electrolyte chambers and they are series connected so that the optimum operating voltage can be 12 volts. The reason I'm doing it this way uh, is to eliminate the leakage currents that might exist in between a stack of regular series plates. By giving each set of plates its own electrolyte chamber, just like a car battery, uh, you eliminate those leakage currents and to further to further reduce those leakage currents I also have plates of like polarity facing each other all the way down the stack so that there is no voltage potential difference between one plate group and the next plate group. So that's it. Uh, 
I have a lot more work to do, but mo all of the plates are cut. I do have to uh, tap these plates out against the vise because as I cut them with the shears, when I, when I make the cuts along the edges, the edges start to curl just a little bit. And uh, of course, with tight spacing, you need to have the plates flat. Incidentally, almost every night this week, I have been broadcasting at Livestream.com as I continue on the build with this new cell. Uh, because it so closely resembles a 12-volt car battery with interwoven plates in six individual chambers, series connected, just like a car battery, uh, I've dubbed this the bat cell. So, Zero's bat cell is uh, underway, and uh, if you have a moment, you know, feel free to stop by at Livestream.com forward slash Zero Fossil Fuel. Uh, I'm here most evenings right now in the, in the middle of the build. There's no obligation to stick around or to keep me company, but if, you, if you'd like to see what I'm up to as I'm building, feel free to stop by. So, I appreciate you watching, and uh, if you have not subscribed to my channel, I hope you will. And if there's anybody else you know of who may be interested in alternative, the alternative energy research that uh, some of us are, are involved in, tell them about the channel. Maybe they'll subscribe too. The more people that we can get on board, looking at these types of things, inspiring new ideas, uh, the quicker we will uh, arrive at a solution that will uh, alleviate much of the burden that mankind is faced with today. So that's all for now from the lab. I appreciate you watching again. Thanks everybody. Peace.